A new rumor suggests that the live-action race-swapped version of The Little Mermaid cost Disney millions of dollars. It was a box office failure by all accounts, at least according to some sources. Hi everyone, my name is Jacob Berry. Welcome to the Studio Jake Vidcast, where I talk about all things pop culture. Be sure to like, share, subscribe, and consider becoming a channel member. Don't forget to ring that little bell if you're watching on YouTube so you get notifications when I post a new vidcast. All right, so a new rumor is suggesting that the live-action remake of The Little Mermaid cost Disney millions at the box office. Now, remember, this is just a rumor, and I'm not presenting it as fact. I will give my opinion of the rumor after I discuss it a little bit. But before, I wanted you to hear this report because it's fun to talk about rumors. Sometimes they're funny. Sometimes they're kind of a downer like this one is geared up to be. But I just wanted to share it with you so you're in the know. This is according to PiratesAndPrincesses.net. A little over a year after its release, the live-action remake of The Little Mermaid has left the public consciousness. Aside from the Disney Junior animated series Ariel, the movie caused many to rethink and ask, why do we need all these remakes? The once profitable trend that Disney could rely on for money is drying up. The film's first teaser trailer currently holds the record for the most disliked trailer for any Hollywood production with over 30 million views. It has 3.8 million dislikes. As the worldwide box office, the movie made $569.6 million against a reported $240.2 million budget before advertising costs and theater cuts. Initially, Disney was said to have made a small profit from the film, not as much as the billion-dollar successes like the 2017 Beauty and the Beast or the 2019 version of The Lion King. However, it turns out that the original reported budget wasn't accurate to what ended up being spent. In a recent report from Forbes, the movie ended up actually costing... 355.1 million exceeding the original production budget. One of the biggest factors in that was that the large amount of visual effects, which ironically was an element that was heavily criticized. The initial filming ended in July of 2021 with the visual effects being worked on over the next year. According to a financial statement, an additional 35.4 million was spent on effects. The film's large cost was slightly decreased thanks to a 65.2 million cash reimbursement from the UK government for filming there, bringing it down to 289.9 million. With the estimated 285 million in theater cuts, the film ended up losing Disney roughly 4.9 million at the box office. While not a major money loser, the movie did more damage to Disney's image than its bank account. Stacks of unsold dolls, school supplies, clothes, and cosmetics based on the movie are all being placed in clearance bins while merchandise based on the 1989 original took its place. Both this film and the upcoming remake of Snow White and the Seven Dwarves are seemingly the straws that broke the camel's back for many. The future of Disney's live-action remakes may be severely affected by these failures. All right, so head on over to piratesandprincesses.net. They do a lot of great work, especially reporting on Disney as well as the parks and other film companies as well who have princesses and pirates. My question to Disney is, what did you expect? You saw the reactions to the other live action remakes and how that turned out. For instance, Maleficent, even though it did make a profit and it had a lot of star power behind it, fans were kind of confused because Maleficent goes from being one of the most evil villains in all of the Disney villain canon to being this woman who basically got me tooed. And I personally think that that's kind of ridiculous. You see that with other of their live action remakes as well. Corella, she's not just this selfish, greedy sort of fashionista who wants the Dalmatian coat because, you know, it's something new, it's something vibrant, and it's something she just has to have. No, we have to have this sad, mournful, soulful backstory where she's just basically a Harley Quinn knockoff of the live-action remakes. The Lion King was okay. It was just basically a shot-for-shot -shot remake, but without the expressions that a 2D animation can give the animals. I thought that 
Cinderella was probably the best of them. It had a really great cast. It stayed true to the original. It even filled in some gaps here and there. It made the prince a bigger character, so he got a little bit more agency in the film other than just being a pretty face. I also thought the Lady and the Tramp remake was pretty good. I know that that's kind of a controversial opinion, but I thought the story was good. The voice acting was really good, and the acting was good in that movie. I thought Cinderella and the Lady and the Tramp, those two specific live action remakes were best. The Jungle Book, it was like it wanted to flirt with being a musical, but then it didn't do anything. Aladdin was just terrible. And now we get to The Little Mermaid, which was really a puzzling event. Now, I haven't seen it, so I'm not trying to review the movie, but I did think that considering how it was advertised, how that was kind of one of the films where Disney was jumping on this bandwagon of attacking the fans. They had their sort of surrogates in the news media do that. And also there's social media influencers, you know, who get free stuff for promoting Disney. Those people were definitely on the bandwagon of we're going to attack people who don't like it as bigots. And that's not working out for Disney because you're chasing away your original fans in order to appeal to an audience that doesn't have any money. You know, it's the, the social media mobs. Those folks don't actually have any money. They're just complaining. And some of them, it probably just one guy in his basement with, you know, a dozen accounts, and then he can use some sort of program to just basically regurgitate the same thing with slightly different adjectives and verbs, and you've got the modern audience. But no, Disney chases after them for some reason. Now, it does appear that they're shifting Inside Out 2, by all accounts, kind of signals a shift, at least in the Pixar stuff. Obviously, Marvel and Star Wars are behind for Disney. I don't know about their main stuff, but we've seen failure after failure with Lightyear, with Strange Worlds, and other such films where they're causing Disney to kind of feel it in their wallets. Now, Iger, he has lined the Disney board with Yes Men. Well, even Yes Men start to feel the impact of financial losses because of these woke DEI, you know, didn't earn it type of storytelling. It's not working. If it was working, then the activists who are saying Disney needed, needs to be more X, Y, and Z, they would be going and they would at least be breaking even. That's not happening now. And apparently with this new rumor on The Little Mermaid, I think that it's just a furthering of the evidence that we're seeing. Now, my opinion on this rumor, did The Little Mermaid lose Disney $4 million or over $4 million? Yes, I think so. It was clear that that movie was doomed to begin with. As soon as you hear Aquafina voicing the seagull, you know that it's going nowhere when you see the designs for Flounder and Sebastian. You know that it's going to crash and burn. I've also heard that some people, when they heard the Scuttlebutt song, which is what Aquafina sings as the seagull, I heard one reviewer call it if the forces of hell were made sound. I also saw another reviewer, actually it might have been the same reviewer, reviewer where he pointed out so ariel is black king trident is played by javier bardem so obviously they're trying to code him as hispanic and there's a shot where ariel visits all of her sisters apparently and i think this is true because i saw it in the storybook where all her sisters are all different races and one of this reviewer, I thought it was really funny. He basically said that they don't actually say that they're Ariel's sisters or their daughters. So he was like, I wonder if this is, you know, King Trident's harem. They're not actually Ariel's sister because they never, she never calls one specifically sister or sis or sibling or whatever. So he was like, I wonder if these are all just his harem in this film. I thought that was kind of funny. But with that kind of mockery of the movie, not just on YouTube reviews, but just in general, where audiences didn't show up, they voted with their wallets. I think that that shows, yeah, this was a problem for Disney. So who knows? I do think it's kind of ridiculous that countries give taxpayer dollars to film companies. So why did they get a reimbursement from the United Kingdom? That's kind of dumb. Come on now. Why should the UK citizens subsidize Hollywood? you know, not even a British corporation, right? Walt Disney is American. I think that's kind of dumb. I would like to see less of that. I don't think the entertainment industry needs to prop up or be propped up 
by any sort of government, whether it be the U.S. government, the U.K. government, or North Korea, whatever it may be. I think that's very silly. Of course, we know that Disney in particular likes to cut corners. We saw this with Mulan, right? They actually filmed in China in an area where there is a prison camp for people who have strong sense of faith. But did Disney acknowledge that? No, not at all. We need that box office money. Apparently, though, that's not working too well for them because Disney, they're making all kinds of enemies in the wrong places with their fans, with governments, with the audience in general. And I think that this rumor of The Little Mermaid losing money at the box office, I think that proves that. If you like that video, be sure to give it a like, share it out to all your friends, leave me a comment to what you think, and subscribe. If you're watching on YouTube, ring that little bell so you get notifications every time I post a new video and consider becoming a channel member. If you don't want to support me on Big Tech, click on the link to my locals community in the description of the video. You can subscribe monthly, kind of like a Patreon or a subscribe star, or you can send me tips on articles that I write. It really helps out small indie creators like myself. You can also pick up one or all of my novels on Amazon. Just search the titles, Cacophony, The Seven Royals, Blessed Child. They're all available on Amazon. And leave me a five-star review. Once again, that helps out guys like me. I just want to say thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time right here on Studio Jake.